Good morning, everyone. I'm Leah Dixon from Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, and I am here this morning with my regular Tuesday morning Facebook Live. So um, Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m., I pop on and create a little card for you. So um, today we're going to be creating with the Daisy Garden stamp set. It's one of our new stamp sets, and it's pretty much like a full background stamp set. So I'm going to switch my screen over and give you a peek at that stamp set. So there you go. It is a big full background stamp set and because of that today I'm going to actually be using a tool with it that I don't normally use um, and that is my Stamparatus. So the Stamparatus is kind of the savior for any time that you are stamping with a larger image because if you kind of mess up and don't ink up a spot or whatever, you can just re-stamp it. The reason I'm actually stamping with my Stamparatus today is because I'm actually planning to make multiples of this card. Um, each month I send out a lot of cards. Um, and so when I design something um, and it's quick and easy to reproduce, then I like to do a whole bunch of them. So, um, I'm just going to pop over here and put a comment in the comment box and then hopefully as you guys pop on and say hi, I'll be able to see your comments. Hopefully, hopefully Facebook will work that way for me today. Alright, so this is our Stamparatus and basically what it is, is it's hinge stamping. I actually have two sets of hinges, so if you're doing like... Um, uh, two-step stamping. You could actually hinge both of your stamps and then be able to do them quickly. I'm just using the one, but I really liked this because we're going to be doing a spotlight as well, and this is going to allow us to spotlight an image. All right, so to get started, I have a piece of basic white cardstock here, and I've cut this at three and three quarters by five, so it's about half an inch smaller. Well, it's exactly half an inch smaller than um, our regular card front. Okay, so I'm going to open up my Stamparatus. I've al already placed my stamp on here, and I did that by putting the stamp actually where I wanted it on my grid paper, and then closing my, plat my plate over top of it so that it would stick to my plate. Now it's exactly where I want it. I always ink it up once and stamp it as well so that I can see where things are going to fall. So now I can decide where I want this, and I want this positioned so that um, both these flowers at the top are actually on my card. So I'm going to come in here and do this so that I, can, I can't see them, so I know that they're fully on my card front. Oh, good morning, Marianne. So you can um, use the magnets to hold this in place because I'm kind of worried that this is going to slip and I'm going to have to do it more than once. I am going to put my magnet. Now this Stamparatus comes with two magnets. I tend to only use one um, because if you use two, they have the ability to kind of bump into each other and then they crack. So just to avoid that, I only use one. Plus on this particular stamp, I don't really have too many good places to put my magnet. In fact, I should probably just tape this down. Um, so now I'm going to take my Smoky Slate ink and I'm just gonna shift this over a bit. And we're going to gently put ink all over our image. So you don't have to press too hard. You can see I actually got a little bit crazy with it earlier and I've got some ink where it doesn't need to be. So we're just gonna do some light taps there. And now with that inked up, I am going to close this and just gently press down. And then I will lift this. So now if I missed any spots, see right there, I've missed a few spots, I can close this again. Nothing has moved and I can make sure to push down in those areas so that I get a fully inked image. Oh, and up near my magnet as well. And so I can just, and if I needed to, I could even re-ink. In this case, I know that it's not about inking, it's about me not pushing down fully. And so there you go. I was able to just keep closing that, it stayed in place, and I was able to re-ink my image until I got the exact image that I wanted. 
All right, so now while we have our Stamparatus out, I am going to grab one more piece of paper. Oh, now I tucked it away. Oh, there it is. I tucked it away somewhere safe so I wouldn't lose it. It's just a really small scrap piece of paper, um, but it's larger than these two flowers here together. And I'm going to put it down so that those two flowers are covered. I'm not even going to bother um, holding it in place or anything. And over here, I'm going to ink up just those two flowers. I'm not going to go crazy trying to ink up the whole image. And then I'm going to close this. And I love it because I know that I for sure got those two images fully on my paper because I was able to line it up on the image that was on my plate. There we go. And so now I have those two images on this piece of paper and I'll be able to use those on my card as well. So then I can just close that. The other thing I like about using the Stamparatus is now this nice big inky stamp is closed up and I'm not going to be able to drop anything in it and get ink on any of my cards or anything because I am notorious for doing that kind of thing. Okay, so that was our Smoky Slate ink and our Daisy Garden stamp that we've just done all of that work with. So now that we've got that done, oh, my whole desk is shifted in a mess. I'll just try and straighten up a bit. Um, so now that we've got that done, we're going to add some color to this piece. Now, I'm not actually going to add a ton of color to my daisies themselves. In fact, the only thing I'm really going to do is just spray some ink across my across my image using a water painter. And so to do that, I'm going to grab a block. You can see I didn't clean that block up very well. And I'm going to get my Blackberry Bliss ink and just put a little smush of it onto my block. Now with that little smush of ink, oh, and I'm going to move all my other bits out of the way so that I don't get ink on them. I'm going to take my water painter and just do a little drop on there so that I've got some gorgeous Blackberry Bliss paint. And then, just using the lid here, I am going to just tap and splatter. And then, I'm going to put quite a bit more water on here so that I get a much softer color, much softer Blackberry Bliss. And I'll splatter that so it actually makes it look like we've got two colors of ink on here because we've got the dark and the light. And you can't see the difference as much while they're wet, but once they dry, you'll really see the difference. All right, and then, not over top of my project, to clean my aqua painter or water painter, I just squeeze it until the water runs clear. So I'm not going to um, spend the time when you're using a color like Blackberry Bliss. That can actually take quite some time to run it clear. I might even take it to the kitchen sink and run water through it. Um, so I won't take the time to do that here on our video, but that is how you would do it. You just keep running water through it until it ran clear. This I'm going to put off to the side so that I can use it for a watercolor painting project um, this afternoon. But I do want to put it somewhere where I'm not going to accidentally drop things in it. So you can see it's a bit of a mess. I've got some ink kind of everywhere. I'm just going to clean up a few of the bits that are in spots I'm worried about. All right. And, oh, I got it everywhere. All right, so water painting is a little bit messy, but it's so much fun and creates such beautiful projects. So with that all done up, that's kind of all the color I'm going to add to that. We're now going to mount this onto a piece of pear pizzazz, and I've cut this just an eighth of an inch larger. So this is actually cut at three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And so you can see it creates just the slightest little border there on our card. So I'm going to attach that. You can use whatever you'd like. I prefer using liquid glue to attach this because then if I don't get it straight the first time, I can kind of wiggle it around and line it up. Okay, so here we go. 
So I love using large backgrounds to create cards because it allows you to create such a beautiful card so quickly. Oh, that is very crooked. And this is where having the liquid glue comes in handy because I can just kind of move it around until I get it straight. Well, maybe I won't get it straight today just because I seem to be challenged that way today. Okay, there, that's much straighter. Okay, so I do like the liquid glue for that. All right, so we've got this kind of fun little daisies with a splatter and um, is mounted on our pear pizzazz. Now I'm going to grab my big stamp and cut and emboss machine. Unfortunately, I can't use my little one today because our cardstock that we're cutting with is too wide. So I'm going to grab that with all my plates. I'm going to put my piece of cardstock there that I've stamped. And I'm grabbing one of the sentiment dies from, um, oh, what's, these are the ones that coordinate with the poppies. Um, it is from the painted labels dies. And I'm popping that on so that it's taking out just that bottom corner. And then I'll put my top plate on and we'll run this through. And so I am running this through with both the pear pizzazz and the basic white layer that I stamped on. There we go. So with that pulled through, and I'll pop that out. So I've got this label here that I can use on something else. That'll be a fun little accent. And then I've got our card front with a nice big hole in the front. what we're doing today is a um, like a pop-out window so we're actually going to be doing some stamping that's going to show through that window so now I'm grabbing a thick basic white card base and this is going to go on top of it with dimensionals but first of all we're going to do some stamping in there and we're also going to figure out our placement of our stamped image because I want to add um, some colorful flowers, like some accent flowers to this. So those two little ones that we stamped before, I'm now going to grab my blends and um, I've got fresh freesia here. This is the light fresh freesia and I'm not going to be too too careful because I am um, going to fussy cut this so it doesn't really matter and I'm just going to really quickly color those two flowers. So this is the light fresh freesia and then I'm going to come in and give it a little bit of an accent with the dark fresh freesia, especially where my two flowers meet. Just so that they have some definition there between the two. So I'm going to use my dark fresh freesia now just to do one of these flowers so it stands out from the other. Okay, and again, I'm really not being super careful because I am going to be fussy cutting this, so I really don't care. In fact, it works to our advantage if there's a distinction um, at the edge so that if there's some painted out on the outside and I don't cut perfectly, we don't have that white border. All right, so now for the centers of these, I would normally use a Blackberry Bliss blend. But for some reason, um, I don't own one, which is really strange because I try to have all the blends. So instead, I'm going to use my Blackberry Bliss ink. So I've just squeezed my ink pad and it put some ink on the lid here. And then I'm going to take what's called a blender pen. You actually get three of these in a pack. And it's like um, a clear ink. And I'm just going to wear some off on to my scrap paper and now I'm not going to actually color this though because the center image is all these little dots so I'm actually going to do this by like putting my pen down in a dot pattern and filling it in that way okay so kind of like pointillism and then I do need to re-ink because it's getting a little bit too light I am trying to do my darker ones 
along the outside edge and then getting lighter in the center just so that we have more definition between the center of our flower and the petals. And then I'll do the same thing on my other side. So basically what this is, is it's a great way to add color if you don't have the pens or, you know, maybe even you don't have the inks and you just have the markers, you can scribble some marker onto a block and then pick it up with the blender pen and kind of paint with it. So you get a different, um, less solid look than if you're just using straight up markers. All right, so there we go. And then to clean this, because I'm using Blackberry Bliss, it will stain, like it'll be visually stained. But to clean it so that I can use it in other colors, I just rub it on my paper until it runs clear. All right, so that is how we're gonna do the centers of those daisies. And then I can put my Blackberry Bliss away. So now we have these gorgeous flowers here to fussy cut. Um, it's not my favorite thing on the planet to do, but it does just create such a beautiful look. And so I'm gonna come in here and just start cutting. So I do try to not move um, my scissors too much and more just twist the paper around as I slowly close my scissor blades. And then I'll open up again. And so it's just really kind of maneuvering the paper to where I want it to be. I do like to try and stay quite far in on my scissors as well. Like I don't tend to use the tips of my scissors when I'm fussy cutting. And there we go. So I'm just going to do that. So while I fussy cut this, there's a few things I wanted to let you guys know about. Um, June 24th, Stampin' Up! has just announced that they are having a free shipping sale. So basically what that means is from like probably like 11 p.m. I think on um, on the night of the 23rd until 10.59 p.m. on the night of the 24th. Any order you place during that time will have free shipping. Um, and that's, you have to place an order of $65 or more to get that free shipping. But that is amazing. Um, that's like $10 or more savings on your orders. So definitely if you are local to me and um, want to put in an order, you can just contact me. And uh, even if it's less than 65, I can just add it to my stuff. If you're not local to me, then you are definitely going to have to um, just order for yourself. You can contact me though, and I can help you with that. And um, I've got a host code and everything. So I'll put that into the comments later. I forgot to add that today. Um, but remember, you don't want to use that until the 24th. You won't get free shipping before the 24th or after the 24th. So your best bet is to just email me your order and then I can make sure that it gets ordered at the right time so that you get that benefit. Um, yeah, so that is um, kind of the big thing that's happening right now. So I do have some upcoming classes for July. I just haven't finalized dates yet. We're trying to finalize our camping dates and stuff like that so that I can finalize my stamping schedule. I do know that on June 23rd, I am doing a sip and stamp night featuring the kits. And basically the 24th is a great day to do your ordering for that. Um, to attend my sip and stamp, you just have to order yourself a kit, whether it's a paper pumpkin or um, one of our kits online. And we have 10 new kits. I've been I started last night featuring one of them and I'll be featuring them all week long. Um, so grab yourself a kit and do that when there's free shipping. It's perfect. And then join us. Um, just let me know that you want to join us. I'll send you the Zoom link and you can join us for that on the 23rd. So that should be really fun. Oops, I forgot to cut these in half. Sorry guys. Um, so even though it's the two of them, I am going to cut them apart so that I can use them kind of in a fun little way here. Um, yeah, so that is the one date that I do know for sure. And then I'm going to be finalizing some other dates for some Christmas card classes and some fun stuff like that. So do keep an eye. And if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, 
but would like to know when all those things are happening, um, there is a link in the description that you can use to sign up for my newsletter and then you'll get all the details on all those things all the time. Well, not all the time, but I tend to send out an email at the beginning of each month and then anytime something special comes up, like last night I sent out information about the 24-hour um, free shipping sale because I didn't know about that when I sent out my newsletter at the beginning of the month. All right, so what's going to happen here is I want to position these flowers kind of, I think I want one about there, and then this one I'm actually going to tuck in so that it's underneath. Um, so that we can only see part of it, so we can't see where I cut it away from the other one. In fact, I might even tuck it in more. So I might reverse those. Maybe put that one up there, and this one down here, just like that. Maybe over there. I don't know. Uh, I forgot which way it goes. There we go. That's up. Okay. So yeah, I think I'm going to put these in like this so that they kind of... Um, frame my words and then I'm just going to do a quick check to see where this needs to go so that my words will actually fit. Okay, so if I do like that, that should work. That flower goes in over there, that one goes up there. These words will fit in nicely there and then I'll just kind of work around it. Okay, so I am going to remove that for now so that I don't accidentally stamp on it. I've got this kind of lined up where I'm going to want it. I'm going to ink up my thank you in Blackberry Bliss and stamp that. And I'm stamping actually onto my card front. Okay, so just like that, it's on my card front. All right, so with that done, we can put away our Blackberry Bliss ink. And I can start putting this card together. So I'm going to actually tie a piece of ribbon around this as well. I'm going to grab a piece of fresh freesia ribbon. And uh, let's see here. Like that. So I'm tucking it through this little gap that I've got. And I'm just going to see how much ribbon I need on the one side. There we go. Okay, so I've tucked it through kind of guessed at how much ribbon I need on my cut side and then I'm going to tie it through just once Oops, let's bring you on top and I'm going to make my bunny ears wrap them around each other and I'm still attached to my roll of ribbon this is one way that I do this so that I don't end up actually using too much more ribbon than I actually need and I'm going to come in here and just keep doing that until I have the size of the ribbon, the size of bow that I'd really like. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to snip this off of my roll of ribbon. There we go. Snip that side just so they're equal. So now that was our fresh freesia ribbon. Um, it's called an open weave ribbon. We have that in all of our ink colors. And then I am going to just slide this over so that it's a little bit closer to where my words are. But how that bow is laying, it's not going to cover up my words. So I really like that. Now this, now that that's created, oh, I'm going to snip that ribbon just a little. I'm going to make that bow just a tiny bit smaller. And snip that ribbon a bit more. I don't like it when my ribbons hang off the edges of my cards um, because then they don't fit nicely into the envelopes. All right, so with that done, we are going to attach this to our card front using some dimensionals. And I am going to get a little carried away with my dimensionals because I want to make sure that especially around that pop, uh, that window, that um, we don't get any sagging. So around that window I'm going to do a full six and then I'll do my top corners and one in the center just for fun. So you probably don't need that many dimensionals but anytime that something's going to be going into the mail I just really don't want it getting flat in the mail. Okay, there. And then we're going to take this and place that right on top. 
And there we go. All right, so we're almost done, but now we're going to come in and add in our flowers that we created. Now remember, this one's going to tuck in underneath. I may have to trim it a bit because I put those dimensionals in there, and now I can't push it in far enough. They're bumping up against the dimensionals. So I'm just going to trim that. There we go. That's going to allow it to go in much further. There. Oh, and it's sticking out again, so I'm just going to trim that corner. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to put just a little bit of seal or seal plus on the back. You can use whatever adhesive you like. And we're going to tuck that in. And I'm just tucking it in until it's not covering my words. And then for this one, I'm just going to put my adhesive on the top of this flower because part of it's hanging over the edge. And I'm going to tuck that under my ribbon as well. There we go. Is that the right way around? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. There. And then I'm going to pull my ribbon. And it's okay if my ribbon's covering it. That's just kind of the whole... The whole thing we're just kind of layering up and highlighting some stuff here all right and now a little bit of bling to finish off this card i'm going to use two kinds of bling actually i'm going to bring in some wink of stella and i'm going to color the centers of my flowers i could have done this before i suppose um but i didn't and I'm also covering in the centers of the flowers that didn't get any color in the background there. Okay. So just kind of wink of Stella, all of it. Love it. Okay. And then we have got the In Color Jewels. And so I, you can tell it's one of my favorite colors because I'm down to just three jewels left. But we are going to throw some of these. Just I'm going to just really lightly place them for now. Uh oh, that one left its adhesive behind. I guess that one's there. Um, I try to really lightly place them when I'm first positioning them. That way, if I want to move things around, I can. Maybe not in the word sentiment area at all. Let's see. Maybe up here, because I actually didn't want that one there. I'm going to move it over a bit. Oh, come on. So now this is where I should probably grab my take a pick tool. All right. Oh, and I left the adhesive behind on that one again. Darn it. Not having luck with these today. All right. I'm going to put that down. I am going to grab my take a pick tool so that I can get this off of here with its adhesive. There we go. And place that there. So I'm thinking we actually need to reposition these a little bit. So this is the nice thing when you don't push them down, then you can kind of move them around and do what you'd like with them. All right. And I think that's actually how I like them. So now I'll go through and really push them down and adhere them to my card front. Okay, so that is, those were the in color jewels that I just used. That's something else. Um, all right, and that is our completed card. So just a little spot of color there, and then mostly it's just that nice smoky slate and some wink of Stella to create just a really subtle, very nice springtime, summertime kind of card which is perfect for a day like today. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, seeing me create that. And um, I hope you enjoy the weather today. It is smoking hot again here. So looking forward to spending some time in the yard and the shade and in the pool. And I will be back sometime tonight. I got to get everybody kind of settled probably around five o'clock when Oh, no, I would be out at the ortho. So probably closer to six o'clock. Um, I'll be on and showcasing another one of our kits from our new kit collection. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.